Welcome to the Sunday News at 10. I'm Doug Petcash. The family of 28 year old Brian Koberger, a suspect in the murders of four University of Idaho students in Moscow, released a statement earlier today on his arrest. The family expressed their condolences for the victims and said they'll quote, let the legal process unfold and as a family will love and support our son and brother. They also said we have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence. Koberger is a graduate student at Washington State University in Pullman and works as a teacher's assistant in criminology. This is his mugshot. In an interview with NBC, the public defender representing Koberger in the extradition proceedings says Koberger will waive the extradition hearing and could be back in Idaho Tuesday night or early Wednesday. We'll have more from that attorney coming up in just a little bit. Koberger is accused of the murders of Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin. They were found stabbed to death in a house just off the University of Idaho campus on November 13th. News Channel 7's Abby Davis joins us now. Abby, Moscow police aren't releasing any details about what specifically led them to arrest Koberger, and they're also staying tight-lipped about a possible motive at this time. Doug, because police arrested Koberger in Pennsylvania, the Latok County prosecutor says we won't get any of those details until Koberger is back in Idaho and a judge unseals the probable cause affidavit. Until then, we're left wondering why the four University of Idaho students were murdered. The answer as to who killed four University of Idaho students in Moscow may lie across the state line, less than 10 miles away in Pullman, Washington. 28-year-old Brian Koberger, a criminology student at Washington State University, has been charged with four counts of first-degree murder and one count of burglary. I am certain this is our guy. Moscow Police Chief James Fry said during an NBC interview Saturday morning they can't share any details about a possible motive, why they focused on Koberger, and how they tracked him to Pennsylvania, where police arrested him on Friday morning. You know, we're sealed um, by what we can share right now, and that's a state law. And um, once we can uh, give that information, we will. Koberger's public defender, Jason Labar, says his client intends to waive his extradition hearing set for Tuesday, which means that information might come sooner than expected. Once Koberger is back in Idaho, a judge can unseal the probable cause affidavit. Some of that will be just uh, um, how fast can we you know, get the proper authorities to transport him here. Labar told NBC on Sunday Koberger could be back in Idaho as soon as Tuesday night or early Wednesday. He says Koberger is well aware of the various stories about him circulating online. I am giving him updates. I spoke to him uh, this morning for an hour last night for 20 minutes, really updating him on some of the allegations that are coming out, but mainly allegations that have nothing to do with the facts and evidence in the case, but really the cross country trip, you know, just, just to clarify those type of facts of, as to why he ended up in Pennsylvania and whether or not he was in Pullman at the time of the homicides. Moscow Police Captain Anthony Dollinger told KTVB on Saturday it has been a taxing month and a half. This has been a horrible tragedy for our community, for the University of Idaho, and absolutely for the families uh, of these loved ones. And knowing that they were finally in custody, um, was a celebration of sorts, but then also it's still sombering. You know that no matter what we do, having him in custody does not bring these four people back. Just because Koberger is in custody doesn't mean Moscow PD's work is done. We are still investigating. We're still looking into every aspect, but we believe Koberger is our suspect. We believe we have our man. We got one more phase to go, and uh, then, then, then the victory will be won. Fry says they're looking for any information about Koberger so that they can paint the entire picture and figure out exactly who he is. Moscow PD is asking people with information to call its tip line. And again, the facts of this case will remain sealed until Koberger appears in Idaho court. Abby, thank you for the update on where the case stands. And now we want to show you more of the interview with the public defender who is handling Koberger's extradition proceedings in Pennsylvania. He is not defending Koberger in the actual murder case. You can watch the full story on the interview tomorrow morning on the Today Show. Attorney Jason Labar told NBC that Koberger's dad flew out to Idaho and drove back to Pennsylvania with him. He added that this was a planned cross-country trip for the Christmas holiday. In this clip, Labar talks about his recent conversations with Brian Koberger. 
So I know you met with Brian today. What's his mood like? Has anything changed? Not really. He still has a very calm demeanor, um, asking questions about the hearing, seeing how his family is uh, making sure they're getting through this as best they can. Uh, he obviously has concerns for them. Uh, and really, he, he's a little ashamed that they have to go through this process. What's he ashamed of? I, I think just putting his family through this, uh, whether it's right or wrong or how it plays out. Is he revealing anything about a connection to any of the victims? No, not, again, I have not questioned him about the facts and evidence. Not being privy to any of that information, I don't really want to elicit any of that information. So he's not offering it because I'm not asking it. Okay, I see. Well, I'm kind of curious, and I know you may not, I don't know if you can answer this, but there have been reports or questions about whether or not he was following at least one of those victims. Have you seen that, or what do you think about that? I, again, I take it with a grain of salt reading what I do uh, online. And I'd really wait until the affidavit of probable cause is released to mention anything. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to make any type of assumptions. I don't want to guess. I wouldn't comment on it until I've had the opportunity to read the affidavit of probable cause and look at the evidence. Okay. Do you have a gut feeling about whether or not he did this? I, I do not. Um, really, my interactions with him are solely based uh, on the extradition proceedings. And I wouldn't want to judge someone's character based solely on that. Again, the Today Show will have more of this interview and story tomorrow morning starting at 7 o'clock right here on KTVB. The University of Idaho says it is keeping extra support and security in place for the remainder of the semester. Counseling services will stay available to all students over the course of the winter break and when classes start on January 11th. The university will also have classes in self-defense, vigilance, stalking awareness, and healthy relationships. They are also giving students personal safety devices, and they've increased the number of security officers on campus as well as patrol. And of course, we'll continue to follow this story and keep you updated as we learn more. For the latest information, follow us here on TV, also on our website, ktvb.com, social media accounts, and the KTVB app.